Welcome back to Humble Homemaking. So I am going to start a series. I couldn't think of a better name, but this is it. It is called Homemaking for Dummies. And I am not saying that any of you are dummies. This is just a rundown of the basics of homemaking. If you are a seasoned homemaker and you just want reminders, or if you are looking to become a homemaker, or if you aren't a homemaker at all, you just want some tips from the homemaking community, then these videos in this series are for you. So let's get started with episode one. So I recommend putting together a chore list and sticking to it. Now for the entire year, I've had the same chore list where on Mondays I would clean the bathroom, Tuesdays would be the living room dusting, and windows. Wednesdays would be cleaning the bedrooms and washing the bedding. Thursdays would be for washing the rest of the laundry in the house, the towels and the clothes. And Fridays would be for deep cleaning the kitchen. Saturdays would be outdoor chores and Sundays would be to, to sit down, rest, write any to-do lists, grocery shopping lists, online shopping lists, things like that. And then for obviously I had my daily chores and my monthly chores on that list as well. I'm going to be making a new one for 2020 and I like to switch it up and make my routine different so it's not so same old, same old every single day. So I'm switching it up for the year and if I don't like it, then I'll switch it back to my old routine. But it's just basically switching some days around so that I'm not cleaning certain things on certain days. But anyways, I'm blabbing. So making a chore list and sticking to it helps you so that you are not forgetting anything. It helps to remind you of things that you need to clean. And it just keeps you on top of things. So you won't miss cleaning the stovetop if you have it on a list to clean every other week. And doing that creates structure in your daily life so that you are not feeling overwhelmed as a homemaker. The next thing is meal planning. Now I've talked about this before, but meal planning Planning helps you to have that structure as well so that you are not feeling overwhelmed with cleaning all day and then standing around in the kitchen looking in the cupboards or the fridge or the freezer thinking oh my goodness what am I going to cook for dinner tonight so what I recommend doing is having a calendar I love these little fancy calendars right here but they are not practical for me so what I do is I buy the generic old-fashioned square block calendars and I write down my meals on there. You could also get a wipe off board and draw out permanent marker grid lines and then just make that your monthly calendar every single month. Write out your to do's, write out your meal plans. So sit down and write out what your family likes to eat and figure out meals accordingly. I like to do a few crock pot meals a week, a few stove top meals a week, and then a few oven meals a week. And so I meal plan and I make this easier. So say today is Monday. So Monday we will have Swedish meatballs. Tuesday we will have the leftovers from that, but I will make it on meatball subs. Wednesday we will have Caesar salads. Thursday we will have the leftover Caesar salads, but I will grill more chicken. Friday we will have a soup and Saturday and Sunday will the the soup will last till then. That is just an example but that is how I do it. I try to make my meals a little bit larger so that we have leftovers the next day for lunch or for dinner. Um, and then, like I said, I try to make it so that if I'm making one meal, I can make it a little different the next day so that we're not having meatballs again, we're having meatball subs. Grocery trips will go by so much smoother and quicker and sitting and wait, wondering what you're going to make for meals will be so much easier as well. The next one is a little bit of a leisurely tip, but it is to set aside noon for tea or coffee. Now this is optional, but this is just something that I do to keep my sanity throughout the day as a homemaker. So I set aside one hour, noon to one o'clock, to just sit down, enjoy a cup of coffee, enjoy a little snack, relax, no phone, just relax and enjoy the sounds around me in my home. Enjoy my son's company. Just enjoy that hour. The next one is that vinegar of all things. White distilled vinegar, as smelly as it may be, is a wonderful cleaner. It is a wonderful degreaser, wonderful all-purpose cleaner. I use it for pretty much everything. I dilute it in a spray bottle and I use it for degreasing the stove top when that needs to be cleaned, degreasing the toaster oven when I clean that. I use it as a base for scrubbing my sink. I will spray the vinegar in the sink and then sprinkle baking soda to scrub it off and it's just a wonderful cleaner. 
It's not damaging. Next tip I have is to learn how to effectively speed clean. Now speed cleaning is something that I love to do. Before my husband comes home, I like to go around into each room and spend an allotted amount of time in each room cleaning it, going out, doing a once over. I also like to do this before guests come over on holidays or I just enjoy speed cleaning because if someone calls me and says, hey, I'm about 30 minutes away and I was just wondering if I could stop by and see you guys and drop something off to you. So, okay, this is a little intimidating. And I'll usually be like, mm, I wish you would have called me the day before and told me this, but that's okay. Not gonna freak out. So I start in the kitchen and I set the timer for 10 minutes and I'll do as much as I can in 10 minutes in the kitchen. And it's actually surprising how much you can get done in 10 minutes cleaning, especially a kitchen. So clean the kitchen and then when the timer is up, if I'm not finished, I go on to my next room, set the timer for 10 minutes, and then, I, and then I'll do the living room and I'll vacuum, and then I do the bathroom. I don't do every single room in the house, but I just do the main rooms that get a lot of traffic through them. The foyer, the living room, the bathroom, and the kitchen. Then when my timer is up in each room, I will go back and do and finish the remaining stuff off. And by the time my guests show up or my husband is pulling into the driveway, the house is the house is clean. My dogs are always going in the window when I'm trying to record a video and my son. So if you see these move, that's what it is. The next tip I have is to give everything a home and put it back when you're done with it. If you see it out, put it back. Even if you didn't take it out, put it back. For example, don't just throw your pens wherever, whenever. Have a pen cup. I'm gonna show you my little pen cup real quick. Before we had this system of giving everything a home, all these pens and pencils would be everywhere. And we'd be like, "Where? Well, I need a pen. I need to write a list of something. Where's my pens? Where's my markers? And I could never find them. Giving everything a home makes everything easier to find and makes it easier for when you're looking for something, you can just go to that thing that object's home and see if it's there. This isn't even a pen cup. This is a tea tin that I found at the thrift store and it says Chelsea Garden. And my name is Chelsea, so I thought it was cute. The next tip I have is don't focus on perfection, focus on progress. So if this is something that's new to you, you've never had a chore list, you're a new homemaker, you just left your job so that you could stay home and be a homemaker, don't focus on being perfect. Don't put people up on a pedestal and think that they don't struggle from time to time. Don't compare your progress to somebody else's progress. For me, I was raised this way, but I it was a struggle when I became an adult. If you watch this video, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. You just want to focus on making progress. If it's overwhelming for you, maybe sit down and write a daily list of things you want to accomplish. Don't don't overwork yourself, but don't underwork yourself. You want to push yourself out of your comfort zone, like I've said before, but you don't want to overwhelm yourself, <clears throat> but you don't want to overwhelm yourself with so much work where you're just going to get burnt out from doing certain things. So focus on progress. Don't put the people on YouTube or on your favorite blogs up on a pedestal. Like I said, they struggle from time to time too. I struggle from time to time too. I am nowhere near perfect. My house is nowhere near perfect decoration wise or, or organization wise. There are so, still some areas in my house that I need to work on with organization. And I am making progress. So focus on your goals, make that progress and the next tip I have is to clean from the top down in every single room. This is what you want to do. And I learned this little technique on my own from watching a, it was like Sandcastle Wars or something like that. It was this show on TV where they were making these elaborate sandcastles and the people that were making them, one of the teams or one of the whatever, making them and they were like, we have to start from the top down because if you start from the bottom up, all that detail is going to get messed up from the stuff that you're moving on to the top. So if you start from the top down, that detail is preserved and then you work your way down and everything gets preserved as you go down. And I was like, okay, I can turn this into a cleaning tip. For example, this is how I clean my living room. I will go through my living room and I will dust everything. I will dust all the tops of these little window things over here. I will dust off the fan blades. I will dust off the bookshelves. I will move on to vacuuming and cleaning. If I were to dust everything, after vacuuming everything, it would just create a new mess for me to clean up. 
and I would have dust all over the place. It's a smooth process of cleaning things and it doesn't mess up your hard work. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. I hope you enjoyed the first video of this Homemaking for Dummies series. I'm off to make a cup of coffee. I will see you next time. Bye-bye!